very clear that um, at the time that there was a lot of excitement about uh, Java and the Netscape browser, and Sun and Netscape decided they needed to work together against Microsoft, because if they didn't join forces, Microsoft would play them off against each other and they'd both lose. Um, and the biggest point of contention in, in that arrangement was what to do with LiveScript. Uh, Sun's position was, well, we'll put Java into the Netscape browser, we'll kill LiveScript, and that'll be that. And Netscape said no, um, that um, they really believed in the hypercard-like uh, functionality. They wanted a simpler programming model in order to capture a much larger group of programmers. Um, and so there was an impasse, and the relationship almost broke up when I think Mark Andreessen, I haven't been able to document this, but people have told me Mark Andreessen, maybe as a joke, suggested, let's change the name to JavaScript. <laughs> and it worked. Um, except that Sun claimed ownership of the trademark. Even though they had nothing to do with the language, they tried to kill the language. They said, we own the trademark. But we'll give you a license to use the trademark. And Netscape said, great. Uh, an exclusive license, only we can call it JavaScript, that's fine. Uh, uh, at Microsoft, uh, they've been watching this with some alarm, particularly when folks at Netscape were saying that uh, Netscape Navigator was going to destroy Microsoft. And so Microsoft, oh, we don't want to be destroyed. It, it turned out Netscape Navigator didn't destroy Microsoft. In fact, that the software that is going to destroy Microsoft is Windows Mobile. But, but <laughs> But I'm, I'm getting ahead of the story again. <laughs> so what Microsoft did was they decided they needed to copy the Netscape model in order to be competitive. So they reverse engineered the JavaScript engine um, and called it JScript. They, had to, they couldn't call it JavaScript because Sun owned the trademark and they weren't getting along very well with Sun at that time. So they called it JScript. Um, Netscape looked at that with alarm. Oh, no, we're going to be em embraced and extended, so we need to make a standard out of this. So they went to W3C and said, OK, we've got a language for you to standardize. And W3C had been waiting for a long time for an opportunity to tell Netscape to go to hell. <laughs> so they told Netscape to go to hell. So Netscape went around to ISO and other places looking for a place where they could buy a standard. And they eventually ended up at the European Computer Manufacturers Association, which is sort of a long way to go for a California software company. But that's where they ended up. Um, and it turned out uh, Microsoft was on the committee that, uh, and a lot of other nice companies that were going to draft the standard. Um, one odd thing about the standards process at that time was Netscape said, we want a standard for this language, but we cannot call it JavaScript because only we can call it JavaScript. Um, so the committee tried to come up with a name for the language, couldn't. Uh, so in the end, they published it with the working title, which was ECMAScript which is maybe the second worst name ever put on a programming language. Um, so what should we call the language? Uh, there's a lot of confusion. Some people still think that JavaScript, JScript, and ECMAScript are three different languages. That's not the case. It's three silly names for one silly language. Um, and JavaScript isn't actually an open name, which is surprising in that this is the language of the world's biggest open system. It's a trademark now of Oracle. Um, and we don't know what they're going to do with that. Um, so we probably should call it ECMAScript, except it's, it's such an awful thing to call it. Um, um, but the ECMAScript standard has served us very well. So uh, the third edition was published in 1999, and that is the edition that you can find today in all web browsers. Um, last year, uh, ECMA approved the fifth edition, first change to the language in 10 years. Um, and it actually defines two languages now. There's the default language, which uh, it, it had to do in order to be compatible. And then there's a strict mode. Uh, ES5 strict is a uh, smaller language than the original. Um, and it's smaller in that it deletes some, unfortunately not all, but uh, removes or modifies some of the worst parts of the language. Um, so in the short term, what language do you use? Um, I recommend in the short term, be working in the intersection of ES3 and ES5 strict. And in the long term, once we solve the IE6 problem, you want to be working in ES5 strict. 
Um, that will be the base of the language going forward. So if there's ever a sixth edition, it will be based on ES5 strict, not on ES5 default. So I recommend don't use ES5 default. Um, that's just not where the future is going to be.